this is a selection called you could make a bet on a street corner as easy as buying a newspaper kind of fits right in with that uh, betting parlor poem <coughs> Newsboy Moriarty was a Jersey City eccentric. In a town full of mobsters, he was not connected to any mob. He was his own operator. He got the name Newsboy because he was always hanging around the newsstands in New Jersey, in Jersey City. His game was taking numbers. He'd go all over the city taking bets on what the last three numbers of the daily take at the racetrack would be. This was a figure they published in the paper every day the day after. He walked up and down the block knocking on doors and the housewives all over would place bets with him. <laughs> if you bet two dollars and you got the number right, newsboys would, newsboy would give you a th two thousand. That's kind of better than doing the fuller brush thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> newsboy Moriarty dressed to look like a working man to avoid trouble. You could mistake him for a window washer or a cleaning up man. He wore baggy work pants so he could stuff all his dollars in the pant legs. Sometimes he might have 500 singles in his pocket, but he didn't want to create suspicion to have a bulge. The bigger number games were run by the Italians, but Newsboy was a crazy Irish loner. He ran his game alone. He'd been doing this for years. He had this routine which included a fleet of old cars all over town. No matter where he was, he had the keys to a car nearby so he could make a getaway or stash his earnings in the trunk. He had about a half dozen of them parked here and there. These were all beat up cars that would, eat, that would have cost a couple of hundred dollars at the time. This was, the, this was in the 50s. Then one day, two painters were sent to paint an old wooden garage. Inside, they found a 47 Dodge sedan. In the trunk, they found a suitcase with two and a half million dollars in small bills. <laughs> That was an awful lot of money in those days. <laughs> it's an awful lot of money in these days. Uh, you know, except if you're uh, one of those bankers on the take. Yeah, God damn. I found out those bankers still run the country. I'm really good. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was... Steve, we were trying to keep them from you. Oh, I, I, was, I was both shocked and happy, Bob, since, since I don't have a bank account. <laughs> Well, the pay the, well, that was an awful lot of money in those days. Well, the painters got nervous, so they took the suitcase to the police. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the police tagged Newsboy Moriarty for it, and Newsboy went to jail. After about a half, after about a year and a half, Newsboy fell ill, and so they they let him out for poor health. But Newsboy still had money hidden in all sorts of places around Jersey City. Sounds like me. That was only one of his suitcases they'd found. He left town and bought his mother a mansion on the Jersey Shore. Newsboy's reign ended in about the late 60s, early 70s. Everyone bet on the numbers in those days. One time my father was making a bet in the rear of a bar when the police raided the place. The bar walls were being repainted at that moment by a crew of house painters. So my father just put on one of the painter's hats, picked up a bucket, and walked out with the crew. He got, he got home in time for supper. That's really funny, because my father was a house painter. <laughs> one of our neighbors in Jersey City, uh, Jersey City Heights, was an elderly German woman. She was well into her 80s, who was collecting bets for the numbers. My mother used to go to this woman and place bets. Well, this woman had a caged parrot in her room, in her home, and the parrot lived in the parlor where the housewives would come in and place their bets. So the parrot, <laughs> so the parrot got to repeat, I'm glad I didn't read this in advance. <laughs> so the parrot got to repeating the conversations. 314 Street, 314 Street. As the, as the police were driving by, they kept hearing this parrot screaming the numbers. 314 Street, 314 Street. They finally put two and two together and, and nabbed the German woman. They shut down her game and arrested her for being a bookie. My mother used to dream the numbers and then go to play and then go place her bets and she'd win. She was up six or seven thousand dollars. My mother was always a bit of a clairvoyant and her sister too. One day the phone was ringing. My mother was walking across the room to answer it and she yelled at the phone, "Hold your horses!" When she picked it up, her sister on the other end said, "What do you mean hold your horses?" There were all these incidents like this. <laughs> 
they were betting people, you know. <laughs> Once it was at night, I was a child and I had already gone to bed. My mother had gone to bed, but she was awake waiting for my father to come home. She heard footsteps uh, come all the way up to the door and then they stopped. Naturally, she thought it was my father, but no one opened the door. Their bedroom door was at the top of the stairs. A few minutes later, a few minutes later, the telephone rang and she went downstairs to answer it. It was her family calling to tell her that her elder brother had just passed away at the hospital. My father used to call her the witch. My father would bet at the track, but first he would study the racing papers. He'd look at the horse's record. He'd try to figure out who had the best jockey and this sort of calculation. At the track, he'd have to bet 20 or $30 in order to win 200. In reality, he'd go to the track and lose a hundred dollars, <laughs> and my mother would win a thousand just sitting in the neighborhood and betting illegally on the back stoop. Wow, what a mom! While he was furrowing in his brow, while he was furrowing his brow over the papers, she would dream a door with a number on it, and that would be the winning number. Wait, have I not been given a page? Oh. That would be the winning number and the day's number, the, la the last three digits of yesterday's take. It drove my father a little crazy, a little. You've heard of, you heard of the pyramid scheme. I know a fellow who had a circle scheme going. He, he borrowed money from everyone to pay everyone else back. Wow, that sounds like, oof. And he tried to stay a little in the black all the time. This was Jersey City, a town full of small, time number bets, compulsive card players, and minor hustlers. <laughs> Get your copy of that book.